right, so here's what the bottom of the scooter looks like. I think these are the weep holes for any water that would get in. There's basically a weep hole right here, which is just that hole you see underneath. So that's gotta just be where if, if water were to get in here, it could just have a place to drain. So yeah, taking those four belts out, I think just removes the controller. So I wanted to, I could take this out. I don't really have a need to do that. So at the rear fender assembly, it looks like we have two screws here. These are three mil Allen. Okay, so it looks like there are two more. It is kind of loose. It looks like there are two more. It will look like three mil Allen. All right, so this side, again, last video, I took off the caliper. This one, I'm gonna do it the way you should. You should have one of these guys or, and something with the ball end. I actually did have one of these. I didn't realize it. And you get rid of this first, just loosen it, and then the ball should allow you to like quickly spin that off. The nut in it, don't lose that. That will come off. We got the wheel off, we got these two screws under here off. Now I'm gonna take these guys off. I think that's going to be three in that Allen. Okay, that's one. That's two. So I'll basically show you. Um, these came out, one came out of right here. And then just symmetrically on these other side right there. Just a little three mil Allen. Fender assembly come out, it does. Okay. Cable attached for the light. So that comes out. So you see cable attached to the light. So I have fender assembly off. Go look at what this looks like. And rear wheel. Essentially the battery isn't secured in there. It actually just comes out like that just I guess it's just sort of the frame so tight mirrored around it just kind of holds it in there so yeah battery comes out exactly like that so yeah that's what it looks like what we can do is weigh it and then I can just tell you everything I know about it, what it looks like underneath it it's basically just the metal frame and some rubber I'm assuming shock absorbers, maybe um, heat diffusion material, those two things, maybe they form double duty. And then you just see sort of a cavity in the metal frame where some of the wires will run. Um, but yeah, pretty simple. Like the plastic bumpers underneath, can take them off. It looks like that might be like a two or two and a half, three mil. So yeah, it looks like you can get the, you have to take the battery out, but here's another weep hole. So if water gets in there, that's where the water would drain. All right, so let's weigh the battery. I've unplugged the battery, and that's essentially what the connector looks like. Uh, this is goes to the controller, goes to the battery. So we have the battery here. It actually feels pretty light. So let's go ahead and All right, so it's saying six pounds, 11 ounces. 3,041 grams, same weight. Okay, so a little over six and a half pounds for this battery. Definitely feels like that. And here's what the rev looks like, sans battery. So here's what I know about this thing. Of Boosted, I asked, can you tell me which lithium ion cells the rev uses, how many, what the overall configuration, like series and parallel, etc. That's what I started with. They were able to say it was a lithium ion battery, yes. 
So they're not telling me cell type. Nominal capacity, 370 watts. They also did say the motors, I believe 750 was peak power, not nominal power for each of the, the hub motors. Um, operating temperatures during use, 40 to 104 Fahrenheit. Which is not that interesting, pretty common. Nominal voltage is 43.2 volts. And then it says charge time three hours, 11 minutes. I then asked them how many charge cycles the battery is rated for. Um, again, asked the cell types. Um, said, for example, like the dual trans battery uses LG MJ1 3.5 amp hour 18650 cells. And they were not able to tell me that and then I kind of pushed a little bit and they said to ask their engineering team and they said that they just don't publicly share that info at this time but they did say the motor rating is at peak power for 750. So yeah that's kind of all we have. Yeah that's all I was able to get from Boosted and this is kind of what it looks like. I'm, what I'm going to do real quick is put the rear fender assembly back on to see if just by unplugging the battery I can get the battery out without having to take that off. Um, I think people will want to know that. Actually, but before I do that, I'll just give a couple more views. So again, battery rev with no battery in it. Kind of a look down there. This is the rear fender assembly. That cable is for the brake light. And basically, I believe it was four bolts that ended up pulling this on, four screws. Let's have the wheel hanging down by the rear motor cable. But yeah, that's kind of what it looks like those pieces off I haven't seen anyone do this yet so I imagine there's some people that are gonna be curious and I guess more interesting thing so I have been a little bit off-roading like on gravel and stuff just to see how it handled and there's definitely a bunch of uh, pieces of dirt and gravel in here so they can get in here stuff definitely gets in but the design of this thing is not to be impermeable from the outside of this. The design is like this is supposed to be sealed, the controller is supposed to be sealed, the hub motors, all that stuff. So I think stuff is designed to kind of get in and get out watered through those weep holes. And then dust, I guess, just gets in, but it won't go into the main components is the, the claim. So last thing we'll do is just see if we can get the battery out without taking off the rear fender assembly. I'm assuming you can. Yeah, I think if you work your fingers in from the back here, because this moves yeah so you can all right so it's that easy we made it way harder but it was kind of interesting anyway to get this thing off but essentially yeah you can just pull this thing out disconnect it throw this one to the side slap a new one in there and you got 20 you actually may get 22 miles at that point if you get another one of these so yeah that's actually not too bad to get it out you just kind of got to finesse it from the rear that's what she said and then, you know, move this thing out of the way, which is designed to do, and it'll pop out. Has the kind of absorption, maybe heat dissipation material below it. So yeah, I guess that's why it doesn't move, but it is not connected to anything as you obviously saw. Anyway, hope that was interesting for some people. I know I would have been super interested to see it. So. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. Subscribe, I decided to actually make this channel about the Rev essentially, or boosted stuff. So I will post more videos. The next one may be about range tests and range uh, data aggregations that I've done. So look for that.